need to thickness the back of my guitar. But this is not a guitar construction video. This is a drum sound event video. Video? Video. Because, for reasons I will explain, I have to change the bearings on my drum sander. Now, to show you why I need to change the bearings, I, or bearing, this one, um, got to take the dust cowl off. Oh, sorry about that. If we look at the, the drum, we, we can see what's going on. The, the problem I was getting is I was getting a very slight, um, let's call it a vibration. As I was pushing the work through, I could feel that the drum was only contacting at one point during its rotation. And so um, I, if I pushed the work through quickly, I was getting a very slight ripple on the surface, more, more of a visual thing than, than anything you could really feel, because this is a very small effect. It's been working really well, and if I push the work through slowly, I get a good finish. But if I work, put, push the work through quickly, I was getting this, this, this ripple. And we can see this on the drum. If you look at this area here, um, it's been taking a lot of material off, the, the sandpaper is, is clogged. But if we go round to the other side, less so. But equally, we've got an area over here that's been taking material away, but not here. Now, the immediate thought is, well, this must correspond to one of the discs underneath. But actually, it's wider than a, than, than a single disc. And I think what we're seeing here is an inconsistency of this offset. And I think it's all down to this bearing, because what I think is happening here, if you saw the original construction videos for this, um, I was getting a rumbling from this, um, this bearing, a sort of a, a, a crunching sound. It didn't sound good at all. But I packed it with grease and it seemed to go away. Um, and also it was getting hot and the, the grease helped with that. But I think what, what is happening here is I think we've got a broken ball or roller or whatever it is in this bearing. And it's the, the bearing isn't being properly supported and sometimes the, the ball's to the one side and some to the other. So sometimes this whole thing is offset very slightly in one direction and sometimes it's offset in another direction. So yes, you could say that I'm getting variations in the discs, but I would counter that by saying, but I cannot see that. This, when you put the straight edge on the drum, it looks absolutely consistent all the way round. You can't see any little bulges or anything. So I can't rule out microscopic um, variation in the drum. But to me, this looks more of an, a, a sort of a, a macro effect um, where the whole shaft is, is moving slightly because clearly we've got a whole area here which is contacting more than this area here on the other side of the drum. This shows a drum that's moved sideways and you, I can't explain that um, looking at individual discs of plywood because they're all going to be in random orientations. You're not going to get a whole group of them moving to one side. Um, I think that's extremely unlikely. I think far more likely is there is small, and we're talking tiny little margins here, just small variations in the centering of this bearing due to the fact that we haven't got a complete set of balls or rollers or whatever it is inside this bearing. So the bearing is, is, is moving backwards and forwards. Sometimes it's that way, sometimes it's that way. And uh, I think what, we, what we're seeing here is, is a lack of consistency in this effect, that on another day it was this part of the drum that was proud and this was pushed further back. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, I'm hoping that by putting a new bearing in here, all of this will go away. I will have to true the drum up, of course, uh, because the chances of me getting this back in exactly the same place as I started are slim. More on that in a second. So here's the bearing. Um, and first thing, perhaps, oh, and uh, because I've turned the, the drum sand around, my, my, my floor isn't even. So the drum sand is now rocking. Uh, as long as I have it uh, parallel to the uh, the axis of my uh, uh, conservatory, I'm fine. But at 45 degrees, it, it does this. Oh well. Um, first thing I should say, there is a grub screw missing here, which doesn't help, of course. But um, it's 
I, I don't think that's causing the problem. Um, this is obviously tightly um, pinned down, but um, it, it, it is something I need to bear in mind when I swap the bearing over because clearly with only one grub screw this axis is being pushed that way. Now the truing of the drum will take care of any slight inconsistency because the truing of the drum that I will do with the sandpaper um, will will re um, center the drum. It's like turning. Um, I will be turning a perfect circle in effect. But I think to, to avoid too much retruing of the drum, I need to make sure the bearings, hello, this is the new bearing, um, that the um, grub screws are the same on this. That I will, I will tighten both grub screws, but I think I need to make sure that one is tight first and is in the same place and then I tighten that one only when I've got that one fully tight and the, the axle is uh, positioned correctly. <laughs> or, <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of thinking out loud here, if that grub screw is pushing this in that direction then maybe I need to have the two grub screws either side. Maybe that's a better idea. Hmm, maybe. We'll have a think about that. Right, this is the new bearing. And at first sight, it looks perfect. It looks ex an exact replacement. I can kind of slot it onto the end here, sort of. And it, and it looks fine. And certainly in the shop, um, by the way, that's the, I think that must be the serial number, I guess, or the model number, UCP 20516, maybe. Um, in the shop, um, using a plastic ruler that they had on the counter, certainly comparing uh, my measurements of this, because th this has never left the drum sander, I couldn't take this to the shop with me, um, because I'd have to go through a whole setup process if I ever took this bearing off and put it back on again. Um, certainly using uh, their plastic ruler, it, this seemed to be an exact replacement for this. Unfortunately, it isn't. Um, it's it's a little bit deeper. Um, when you put that on there it all looks to match up fairly well, although it's, it's narrower here, this has got more of a slope, but actually this extends down and um, I'm going to have to use a thinner shim on this. Um, <laughs> at this point I'm, people are probably wanting to comment on the video, well why don't you replace both bearings? Um, yeah, th this isn't as expensive as I thought it was going to be. Um, it was only £20, only £20, but it's still £20 and um, that's a significant portion of what it cost me to build this drum sander. Um, if I have problems getting everything centred again, then yes, maybe I'll go out and buy another another bearing. However, this is a self-centering bearing. I'm not sure this one is. Um, this one will swivel within its mounting. I don't think this one does. I think this isn't self-centering. I think this is fixed. So it would be nice to, to keep the, the other self-centering bearing at the other end of the axle. I don't know. Flame me in the comments if you will, but I, for, for the moment I'm only going to replace the one bearing. I've measured as best as I can and I have already created a thinner shim, which I'm hoping will be correct, but we won't know exactly, I don't think, until we take this bearing off and get a more accurate measurement. Um, oh, now I've got grease all over me. Um, so, uh, well, let, 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 let's get on with it and see how we go. I'm hoping that that's all right. I've, I've, I've prepared that using the drum sander. Um, let, let's see. I might, might have to adjust the thickness of that. I've adjusted the height of the drum so that this piece of aluminium only just goes through. Oh, there we go. That only just goes through. So what we've got to do is try and get the height so that that's the same. It's um, it, it's tricky to measure. This is as high as the drum will, as the table will go. Um, it's tricky to to judge this. Um, uh, to measure the height of the drum above the table. Effectively I'm using a feeler gauge here and I think that's probably the, the best way to go. But um, <laughs> it's uh, it's how high do you set it. I could set it so that it goes through easier but um, let's set it so that it's a struggle like that. And in fact yeah, it is consistent. I, I didn't think there was... Oh maybe. 
Um, there, there did seem to be some variation in the table, but uh, it, it, it looks still fairly true. Um, but I did wonder whether there was any any variation in the table height. It seemed to be easier to get it through at this end than down there, but maybe the drum... I don't know. Um, let's, let's leave it like that and see if we can get the new bearing on with the same same resistance to movement. So I'm just going to mark the grub screws. And that's the one with the threads. And that one, that's the one that's open. And the washer seems to be attached to the wood underneath, so actually that's probably a good thing. The washer's fixed there. And the same with that washer. <laughs> Stay. Yeah. Right, let's find out about the dimensions. You can clearly see the difference in height between the bearings. Uh, with, with, with the uh, the old shim in place on the old bearing, uh, you've got yeah, 27.2, you've, you've got to kind of find the minimum position really. 27.17 and with the reduced shim on the new bearing again I've got to try and get the minimum 27.3 27.19 27.1716 I think that is so close that we're there I that was yeah I think I'm lucky actually I'll just transfer the positions of the holes across from one shim to the other Right, well, I think we'll just put this back together. Um, I, I perhaps should have marked the exact position of the axle, but I'd I'd measured it to be right in the centre of this strip of wood, so I'm just going to put it back in the centre. Um, I think that's all I can do. I might have missed a trick there, just making sure it was absolutely centred, but I, I believe it was. Th this shim, I don't think, is exactly centred. Um, but we'll see. So, uh, what I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to position the um, the grub screws either side of where the, the original grub screw was. So, sort of, yeah. Whether I'm, I don't know whether I can measure this. Maybe there. But we'll tighten that up once we've got it in, in position. This, this could be really fiddly because I've got no access to the other side of this hole uh, because of the raised table. So um, let's see how, how easy this is going to be. At least that the washer is stuck in place underneath, stuck to the wood, so it might be alright. And hopefully the... Oh, and the washer has come loose, but that's fine because I've, I've got the nut in. And the bolt's going to have to go a few millimetres lower, but I, I'm assuming I <laughs> cut a deep enough hole for the bolt to not bottom out. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. easier than I thought it was going to be. We have now got to position this centrally, which means moving it that way. Oh, 
bearing actually might be slightly wider than the old bearing. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to cause trouble. Uh, I don't know whether the dust cowl is going to fit over this. The bearing is slightly wider this way. That is now central, spot on. As I hinted earlier, if, if I was to line the grub screws up as I had them before, they'd be like that. And then I can tighten this one. But then what do I do with this one? If I then tighten it, it will push the axle slightly this way. Or will it? Hmm. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them positioned either side of where the single grub screw was before and I'm going to try to tighten them evenly. Although this is awkward because... Let's just wait until I've got a little bit of interference. The, the There isn't really enough clearance for the Allen key. So that, I think, is just, just touching the axle. Oh, maybe not. Hopefully, that has them, has the whole thing centred and it's lined up exactly as it was before. Now let's tighten them properly. Ah, oh, this is awkward. You'd think they'd allow for proper clearance. Unless you're supposed to have the grub screws down here, but then I can't. Oh, I don't know. What if I put them down there? No, that doesn't work either. Or design. Hopefully I've tightened those evenly and that the axle is still in exactly the same relative position as it was before. Let's see what sort of height we've got. <laughs> that feels exactly as it was before. So that is really good news. Um, that appears to be the right height. So I think, well, I might have I might have trouble putting the dust hood on, but I think what I might do before I change the, the sandpaper and re-level the drum, I might just try just to see how it whether it works still, um, whether it's still giving a similar result, still getting the, um, the the vibration. We'll just just try it like that. As I suspected, I've got to take a little bit off the uh, the dust cowl. Dust hood. This will now need truing, but let's just see whether it at least approximates a drum sander. Considering I was expecting the problem to initially get much worse due to the need to true the drum, that's remarkably good. There did seem to be some vibration, but I'm still able to get very good results. I think I was guilty of putting this back together before the uh, varnish had dried properly. Maybe varnish never dries properly. We've got quite a variation. We've got about a third of a millimetre variation across the circumference of the drum. Goes from about 94 there to 63. It's 
three, so about a third of a millimetre, 0.3 of a millimetre. The problem is less at the edges, it's only about half, which implies that the shaft has bent maybe, but I'm struggling to explain why this has happened. Incidentally, it's also the same at the other end. This is how I true the drum. Ordinary piece of MDF with a piece of, uh, I think that's 80 grit, it might be 60 grit, but it's quite coarse. One thing that's immediately obvious is this part of the drum isn't isn't getting onto the sandpaper, which means I've raised it slightly, I'd imagine. But this the truing process will take care of that as well, so we'll just carry on going. I don't know how obvious this is on camera, but it's now touching all points of the sandpaper, perhaps not at the very end, so we still might have a little bit of work to do, but I think it's worth looking at what the drum is looking like now. The sound has changed quite a lot, it's, it sounds smoother, um, it's a much silkier feeling when you're putting it in, it's not, going, it's not juddering as you're pushing it in, it's much smoother, much easier to push the, the sandpaper in, so I think it's worth looking at the drum. As you can see, we've touched all parts of the drum. I, I will, um, I will re-varnish this. There's just a couple of spots here that don't look like they've been touched, and maybe this end disc. Oh, well, some of it has been touched. Um, so let's get the gauge on it and see how true we are now. As you can see, there's a huge improvement. I guess we're true within 0.05 of a millimeter. There does seem to be some variation there. There's just sort of small little spots of it. There's little hollows maybe. But uh, compared to before that is remarkably true. Covered this in other videos, but uh, the, the taper here on the end of the pe oh, paper. This is just ordinary paper-backed paper. Um, that that length there, up to the tip which I've cut off, that length is the circumference of the drum. And we're just going to clip it in here. that nicely lined up. And I've just remembered that this usually shreds my hands so I'm just going to put my gloves on. As you can see we've overshot the edge a little bit, which was to be expected because of course the drum is now slightly shorter. I used the previous piece of paper as a template for this. So what I could do, and probably will, is trim a little bit off. So we'll put a new taper on, coming down here effectively. I only have two clamps at the other end, but this, this end I have four clamps, and the reason is that you never quite know where the end is going to finish. 
the reason I've got two at the other end, I only really need one, is to keep the balance correct. And I've got four here so that they're balanced across the, the drum. So I'm just going to cut the end off there. And hopefully we can get this in without slackening off the belt. Loosen it right off. And that should be one well covered drum. was a job worth doing. I'm getting nice smooth consistent results. No wobbles, no vibration. It's all lovely and smooth. Uh, so I'm all set now to do the back and sides of my guitar and hopefully get a high quality finish. Um, and I guess that'll be the next video. I might do more in leg, but um, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to like, uh, subscribe, comment, share, hit the notify button. Do all those usual things and we'll uh, see you later. Bye!